God's house to all the sweet people in Ellensburg. And uh, I told the people on Wednesday night we were going to elaborate on Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. So that's where we want to part this morning. And uh, we forgive Randy for forgetting him to be in love or something. I don't know. I don't know what it's all Good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's always good to see you. If you're here, I know everything's all right for you, so I'm glad you're here. Thank God for you. Service tonight at 6, and uh, other day, glad to have you. And Gail's visitor's there, and Jimmy's uh, visitor back here, and our home folks. Glad you're with us in God's house this morning. Hope you're enjoying the service. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Anybody got it? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I really look forward to it. It's Sunday morning, Sunday night. Amen. Or Wednesday night, we'll be studying in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And then Friday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, please come. You'll enjoy Chris Huff. I know you will. I want you to hear it. He'll be a blessing to you. Oh my, about this uh, story I'm about to read. I don't know about this. A jump, a duck, a skunk, and a deer went out for dinner at a restaurant this week. Huh? I don't know about this. You know what happened? <coughs> when it came time to pay the bill, the skunk didn't have a cent. <laughs> The deer didn't have a buck, <laughs> so they put the meal on the duck's bill. <laughs> okay, that's the next stuff. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Would you stand with us as we honor God's word? Now, uh, the Lord is mentioned. 696 times in the New Testament. When you're talking about the Lord in the Bible, you're talking about the personality of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul said that Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That means that Jesus is the body, the human body, the body that you and I can see and touch and so forth one of these days. Uh, that's Jesus himself. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's the body of God that you and I will see one of these days. And so as we go through the Bible and we read about the Lord, remember we're, we're talking about Jesus Christ bodily. In the Old Testament, I just went through the book of Genesis and the word Lord was used over 200 times. I didn't go through the rest of the Old Testament because I used the Vines Concordance and it had 18 pages, full pages, and uh, three rows on each page. So you're talking several thousand times in the Old Testament. The Lord is mentioned. So that's our message this morning. We're going to talk about the Lord, who He is, and uh, have what we need to know about him. Father, help us as we look at your word this morning. If there's somebody here that doesn't know Christ, I pray they would open up their heart and receive him. Those of us who know him, Lord, help us to love him more and serve him better. We'll give you thanks for the service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. May be saved. <laughs> I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now verse 7 tells us who the Lord is. Behold, he cometh with clouds, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Jesus is the Lord. <coughs> Now this verse teaches us the Lord who is, the Lord who was, and the Lord who is to 
God. Uh, the word Lord in the Bible, as I said, refers to Jesus Christ bodily form. Now the Latin meaning for Lord is dominant. <coughs> One who dominates. The Lord is dominant. That means he's over everybody and he's over everything. The Bible teaches us that he created the, the world. The world was created for him. <coughs> and he sustains the world every day as we live. The Lord doesn't see time as we see it. We wake up this morning, it's Sunday, it's uh, September the 26th, 2021 or 2021. The Lord has neither beginning nor ending. He has no starting place. He has no ending place. He is the Lord. Psalm 102, verse 27, it says, Thou art the same, and thy year shall have no end. God always stays the same. He will never have an ending. We have a beginning. We have an ending. We can't comprehend all of that. But God had no beginning. Don't sit around and try to figure out that God had no beginning where he came from. He's always been, and he always will be. He created us and gave us a beginning because he wanted somebody to worship him and serve him. The Lord sees time as one continual process. It's just time to him. It's one continual process. Now look at what the Bible says here, the Lord who was. Jesus was from the beginning. In Exodus chapter 3, God told Moses, I am that I am. John chapter 8, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus was, he's always been here. I guess some people have the notion that maybe Jesus would just came into the world and was born as God. He's always been God. It was God that came into the world born as a man. He entered into our society, so to speak, so that he could accomplish the plan of salvation. Before there was anything, Jesus was there. He existed. He created the world. He spoke the world into existence. Designating the world and the universe. Designing everything with all of its wonder and all of its beauty. You and I haven't seen not even a third of his creation, 80% of everything God ever created is underwater in the oceans and uh, seas. We'll be able to see it all one of these days. The Lord who was. Then the Lord who is. Jesus is. He just is alive this moment in time as he's ever been. He's alive in heaven. He's alive, he's present, he's observing, he's carefully taking everything in at one glance. He sees everything that's going on in this world in a moment of time. All he does is just glance and he knows exactly what all of us are saying, what all of us are thinking, what all of us are doing. He said, that's mind-boggling. It is. But he's God. Amen. No one can do that but him. The Bible says that his eyes never close. His attention never wavers. You and I get tired and sleepy and so forth and so on. We close our eyes. We've got to have rest. Uh, our attention.
attention span is not very long, but God never wavers. His eyes never close. He never gets tired. He never loses sight of what's going on. He never loses control of this world and what's going on, regardless of what we may think or what we may believe. The Lord who he is, Jesus is. And then notice the Lord who is to come. He's coming again one of these days, folks. Amen. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. He is coming again. What does this mean to a Christian? The Lord who was. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. It means that the Lord is in charge. It means that before God created me in the womb, he knew me. He knew what color my eyes would be, how tall I would be. He, would, he knew all about me. He saw my life at a glance every moment of my days. He formed all that in the womb and caused it to take place. He did the same thing for you. He's in charge. Amen. He's the Lord. The Lord who um, is, he's closer to you than your right hand. The Lord is closer to you at this very moment than your right hand. Amen. That's how close he is. That's absolutely amazing to me. That his presence can be a reality and yet he's somewhere else and he can be anywhere at any time, at all times. The Lord has great plans for us. The Lord is to come. Thank God that he has great plans for us. Amen. And thank God he is in charge. I get so sick of it. I, I turn the news on and it wants me, makes me want to, could I use the word regurgitate? <laughs> when I think about our leadership and what they're doing Amen. and what they're doing to our country. Amen. But God's still in charge. Amen. Amen. And he can fix things and change things anytime he takes a notion to. And I'm sure he's going to if we keep praying. <clears throat> the Lord is sovereign. What's this book saying? He's Alpha and Omega. That's the beginning and ending of the Greek alphabet. He's the Lord. He is the Lord. Five times I've found in Scripture that it says he's the Lord of Lords. That means there's nobody equal with him. There's nobody else that can say they're the Lord. He is the Lord of all. Amen. He's the Lord of Lords. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 the Lord appeared to Moses and he told him he was the Lord of Lords, mighty and awesome. I'm the Lord of Lords, he said. I'm mighty and I am awesome. You just do what I tell you to do and you'll be all right. Mighty and awesome. That means the Lord is in charge. He's in control. In Psalm 136, verse 3, this psalm states that the mercy of the Lord endures forever. 26 times. And verse 3 said, He's the Lord of lords and His mercy endures forever. 
forever. Amen. 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 The Lord of Lords and His mercy endures forever. We talked about this in Sunday school. Thank God we have God's mercy today. Amen. And His grace. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 and 16 teaches us that He is the Lord of Lords. He is the only one who is immortal. He had no beginning. He has no ending. He's a forever God. He's everlasting. He's God. He's immortal. No one can take him out of existence because he is God. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, we will study this verse later. He says, He's Lord of lords. The Lord will overcome the Antichrist one of these days and cast him into the pits of hell. Amen. I know the world is getting ready for the Antichrist today. I believe this uh, virus that we're going through is just one of the things he's using to kill the churches, harm the churches, harm Christian people, harm everybody. But he's using that to help set the world up for him to take over one of these days. But the Bible says God had plans for him and the Lord will take care of him one of these days. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, he says he's known as the Lord of Lords, and he's coming back riding on a white horse to set up his kingdom. He'll have on a white robe, and on that robe, on that vesture, will read, The Lord of Lords. Ah, oh my, he's the Lord of Lords. And there's coming a day when he'll take Satan and cast him into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And he won't be aggravating God's people anymore. Mm -hmm. He has no power whatsoever. Is Jesus your Lord? Is he your Lord? Have you received him as your personal Savior? Have you received his plan for your life? Oh, all of us fail it. All of us try to take control sometimes. All of us try to figure out what we want to do and what we need to do and all this kind of stuff. But when it gets right down to the nitty gritty, I believe all of us that know him as Savior realize that he is the Lord. Amen. And he is in charge. Amen. And the best thing for us to do is to just go ahead and line up, follow the best that we can. John chapter 20, Jesus, after the resurrection, appeared to the disciples before this once, and old Thomas wasn't there. This time he appears the second time to the disciples and Thomas is there. They told him beforehand, said, men, you should have been here. The Lord came, you missed it. And the Lord shows up again. He told him, hi, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't believe that unless I could touch the scars and the print of the nails in his hand. I wouldn't believe it until I could see him and touch him. And Jesus appeared. And Jesus tells Thomas, right there it is. And Thomas falls down and worships him as Lord, and he says, My Lord and my God. Folks, whether we want to realize it or not, he's the Lord. Amen. He is the Lord. And we can't escape that. He made us, he's our Lord by creation. Psalm 119, verse 73, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. The psalmist understood that. He said, the Lord put me together. His hand, he put me together. He created me. He fashioned me. He put me together. He made me. In 
then he bought us. First Corinthians six twenty. You're bought with a price. He bought old Bud Stedham a little over two thousand years ago at a place called Calvary. He was nailed to a cross, and he bought me on that day when he died for one purpose, one reason. That's to pay for my sins. Amen. He bought me. He bought me so that I could receive him as my personal Savior. And though he is dominant, he's in charge over all, he's sovereign, he's in control, he never forces himself on anyone. He's not going to come into this room this morning and say to you, if you don't receive me as your Lord, I'm not going to have anything else to do with you. That's not my Lord. I believe until the time you leave this world, he'll be speaking to each one of us. Amen. He will be encouraging each one of us to turn to him. Mm -hmm. Receive him, what he's done for us. He will be showing mercy and grace. He'll be giving us food to eat, sunshine on the earth, on earth, water for our thirst. The next breath that we draw, giving us health to live and survive. He's going to help us until we leave this world. But he's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to try to make you do anything. It's up to us. He wants us to say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And if we don't do it willingly on our own, he's not going to try to make us do anything. He's not that kind of a Lord. But Acts chapter 10, verse 32 teaches us that he's Lord both of the living and the dead. Did you get that? Or this went in this way. He's Lord both of the living and of the dead. I mean, if we don't accept him as Lord in this life, he's still the Lord. He's the Lord of the dead. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. He's the Lord of the dead. Now here's a person who says, I don't have anything to do with the Lord. I don't, I don't owe him anything. I <coughs> make it on my own. I've done all this by myself and I don't need the Lord. Well, that's the way you feel about it. You can go to your deathbed like that. But he's also the Lord of the dead. You still have to stand in his presence one day, fall down on your face, and say, Lord, you are the Lord. <coughs> but it'll be too late. Too late then. But people can't get away from the Lord because he's the Lord of the dead also as well as the Lord. <coughs> I don't know about you, but boys, I studied this message this week. He sure spoke to my heart. <laughs> you're nothing but instead of you're just a piece of flesh. I'm the Lord. I can do anything I want to do. You can't. I'm the Lord. I'm in charge. I'm sovereign. I'm God. If you've never received him, be a good day to do it. Amen. If you know him, be a good day to say, Lord, here I am. What do you need me to do for you? Amen. Would you stand with us, please? Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Christians are praying.